Check one, two, three. Good morning, Flag Church. It's the first time I've had a chance to say that to the entire church in a long time. It's been about a year. You guys look beautiful. You look wonderful. And I just broke the iPad Mini. We're giving away. That's all right. It's a refurb unit, anyways. The, uh, most of you think know what you think Flag Church means. Family Life Assembly of God. But the F, we joke and think that it really means flexible. Which is why you come in and we make you walk up steps to come in. And as soon as you come in, what do you have to do? Walk down steps. Yeah. Yeah, but then you're walking in and finding the seat and you go, why do they have that dumb area roped up? Why can't I sit there? But you're flexible. You've got Zeke feeding you the lyrics because we don't have it on the screen. You're flexible. We're waiting to go ahead and get this game started because we didn't get it figured out and everything. And then they come and you're flexible. And then we see Christina come down, and I've known Christina since she was in sixth grade. It's the first time I almost saw her swear. <laughs> she was just about ready, I think. The words just couldn't come out quick enough, man, but, but it, it, it was tough there. We exist to build, say it with me. That means you're a vision knower. I'm a vision caster, quote unquote. You're the vision knower. What if we were all vision carriers? And that's the goal. That's what we're trying to get. You know, we say something enough, uh, uh, build vertical horizontal relationships, eventually gets cheesy, no doubt about it. But the goal is still there. Because relationships are about people. It's not about a building. That's why the church is here. This is called the Plaster Center, but we are called Flag Church. Because the church is not a building. The church is a relationship. It's people you belong to. And so we hope you, we're glad you're here today. Now, I understand you're here for a lot of different reasons. Some of you are here today because you know it's Connect Sunday and you're hoping to get connected to relationships because you want to grow in Christ. Some of you, that's the last reason you're here. Some of you, this is your first Sunday. What a crazy Sunday to come to for the first Sunday. Mom, we went to this church. Hashtag crazy. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Got a Facebook message from someone the other day on the Flag Church account saying, hey, my name is Joel. I'm from Paraguay. I need a church to congregate with. Uh, I understand you guys are doing something at, at the Plaster Center. What time is it? Can I come? He's here. Joel, where are you sitting, man? Where are you at, Joel? Where are you at? Joel, wait at me. Over here. Wait down there. Wait down there. We go to church, but we grow in a circle. We go to church, but we grow when we're in a circle. We generally don't grow in a row. We don't grow shoulder to shoulder. We grow more face to face. We can get this filled up shoulder to shoulder. But we're going to get this strengthened when life stinks, because sometimes life stinks. We get this strengthened face to face. The whole Bible is the story of God trying to build a family. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. If you'll pull your notes out, it. Like, stay with me, microphone. Anyone get a bulletin when they came in so I can take note? This happened last year. You remember that? Who was here last year? Remember my kid going out on me? Yeah, I'd like to keep using this if I can, Zeke, but if you leave that one handy, I appreciate it. And if I have to stand like this when I speak, I can do that for 13 minutes, max. His unchanging plan has always been to adopt this into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. His unchanging plan, adopt us into his own family through Christ. Not through being religious, through Christ, but his own family. See, church is not a place you go. It's a family you belong to. The Christian life is not a matter of believing. It's belonging, belonging to each other, being as committed to each other as we are to Christ. Now, if you take that too far, it gets pretty cultish. If you don't take it any far, you think all I have to do is believe in Jesus and love Jesus, and that's it. We shared very plainly last week, you can't love Jesus if you don't love one another. How can you love God whom you have not seen if you cannot love one another who you have seen? John 3.16, for God so loved the world. 1 John 3.16 says this, though. This is how we know what love is. Christ laid down his life for us, and we have to lay down our lives for our brothers. I've seen a, a few posts recently on Facebook of single people bemoaning their singleness. Single people, heads up, marriage is not the antidote for loneliness. Every marriage person said amen? amen. Marriage is not the antidote for loneliness. Community is. Single adults can fulfill all of God's purposes without being married. A la example, Jesus. Yeah, single adult. And there's married people that you know that are hopelessly lonely. So today I want to take a few moments to talk to you about something that is the exact opposite of our culture. Our culture says crave independence, crave autonomy. God and the scriptures say 
chase interdependence, like thumb and forefinger, interdependence, where we really are better together. Romans 12, 5, since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other. And each of us, quote, needs all the others, end quote. Now, we're going to be flexible today. I hardly ever ask you to do this, so humor me today. Would you please look at someone and tell them, you need me. Go. You need me. That was easy, wasn't it? That was easy. I need you. All right. Now I need you to look at, look at somebody else, preferably the same person, and say, I need you. Yeah, which one was harder to say? Mm-hmm. If you're a note taker, there'll be four points today, but feel free not to bother taking notes. Just follow along. What do we need each other for? And I'll, I'll speak personally today, although I think you can apply it. I need other people to walk with me. I need other people, point number one, to walk with me. Just as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, Colossians says, so walk in him. God never intended for you to walk through life alone. He never wanted you to walk through anything that you do alone. If it's a mountaintop, you're not designed to go through that alone. How are you going to share it with somebody? And what good is a mountaintop if you're all by yourself? There's no one to rejoice with while you're up there. You need someone to take your picture, right? He hasn't intended for you to walk through life alone. And I understand. I get it in your head. Hey, what's wrong with walking alone? I like walking alone. I prefer going alone. I get my own way. When you walk alone, you don't learn cooperation. Oh, microphone. Come on back. There we go. When you walk alone, you don't learn cooperation. If I can have another mic just right here where I can go to it, that'd be great to see things. We don't learn cooperation. We don't learn relationships when we walk alone. We don't learn how to love. Thank you, man. We don't learn how to love when we walk alone. When we walk with others, it's safer. When we walk with others, it's supportive. It keeps you from giving up. Last Saturday, 31 miles, 50K. I only ran, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to praise myself here. I want to praise everyone who really came with me. The start of it, there was one person there with me besides my wife saying, bye, don't die. <laughs> that one person there, Ryan Schwalken. Ryan, throw your hand up. Ryan was there at 6 to drive the vehicle for support. That support was needed 45 seconds into my run. Because I'm going, man, this feels good. Man, I feel so light. Man, I forgot my tool belt. Literally, I wear a tool belt that's got all the drinks and all this kind of stuff and the bat shark propeller and all that kind of stuff you got to take with you when you're running. Totally forgot it. Totally forgot what I needed. Having that support, I couldn't do it by myself. The first six or nine miles, there are a few people on the road cheering me on uh, at, uh, oh my goodness, this would have been like 6.15, 6.20 in the morning. There's Jeff Schooley, barely half away, up by the side of his road with a sign saying, go past your mark. And I, he turned the right side up because he was tired and <laughs> no, he had it right. And then I, I read about the first nine miles by myself, which didn't bother me. I listened to a Stephen Furtick and an Andy Stanley message. And then I'm past a countryside church, and there's someone in a van off to the side. They're getting ready to come out. I'm going, oh, great, a terrorist is going to attack me in front of the high school. It wasn't a terrorist. It was Sarah West. Doesn't look at all like a terrorist. She jogs a little, runs with me a little bit. Eventually, I end up having a group of people running with me at different times. You need other people to walk with you. If you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go with other people. So God creates two groups for you to be a part of. A physical family that you're born into. You didn't get a choice there. But a spiritual family that you grow into, that you live your life in. Community is God's antidote for loneliness. Marriage is not. Don't put that on your marriage partner. They don't have what it takes to fulfill all your needs. It's an unfair request, whether you are married and you're putting all that on your spouse, or you are single putting all that on your future spouse. But they don't have what it takes, because God has not designed them to have that. Oh, but they complete me. No, they don't. Christ completes you, and he wants you in his body so that you can help feed others as well. As each part does its work, it helps the other parts grow. So Christ's whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. In every human heart, God's put a spot in there for longing for belonging. Which is why in our society, we don't consider the death penalty, to be the death penalty to be the worst form of punishment. What's worse than the death penalty? Anybody? Solitary. Solitary confinement. Getting put in the, quote unquote, put in the hole. We're not asking you or challenging you to be part of a circle for the rest of your life. For three months, asking you to give it a consideration. Point number two. 
Point number two. Uh, first off, I need others to walk with me. I need that. And Christ says he'll do that with you. But I'm not enough to walk with you. You need more than just a pastor. Look at all the people here. I, I can't share myself with every single person here like that. Christ will walk with you, but you need others as well. Number two, I need others to work with me. To work with me. Many of you are tired. Sometimes we get tired all the time. Some of you are tired coming here this morning. Some of you are tired because I don't come to church till 1130. You're not used to the 10 o'clock. Community is God's antidote for fatigue. Community is God's antidote for fatigue. And if you had synergy in your life reducing that fatigue, if you had that group of people, maybe that group of people was your babysitting co-op. You got kids at home? Would you like to have, have a night without kids? Some of you are going, a month without kids would be, yeah, but a night? Who brings you synergy? Who reduces your fatigue? Those people that were with me, there was a time Norm, Norm's on the Olympic guitar today, that he was riding his bike about the last nine miles or so. Now, if you don't understand, when I'm running 50K, I'm not running fast. And he's riding his bicycle as slow as humanly possible, but just having that person by my side was so encouraging. It brings synergy, it reduces fatigue. Community is God's antidote for fatigue. And at this time, I'm going to ask the board to come on up, and my wife, and Anthony, should be coming up. Uh, if he doesn't know, grab him. Somebody slap him upside the head and get him up here. And I need Misty. And I see Misty's coming on the way now. We have a presentation we want to make. And as they're coming, if anyone's seen Anthony, he's wearing that jail jersey. <laughs> there he is. There he is. He got. He's on work release right now. And we're so thankful they're willing to let him be here. Yeah, that, Sarah just said that's a good point. It's kind of like work release tomorrow. Anthony starts his one. Anthony and Misty start their one month sabbatical tomorrow. Can we give it up for them? If there's someone in my life outside of my family that reduces my fatigue because I need others to work with me, it's Anthony Dinesh Kumar Navaratnam. Yeah, did I pronounce it right, Misty? Cha Ching. The, uh, so Anthony he starts his sabbatical tomorrow, one month off. But with the hiring of Pastor Eli, which we've been trying to look for since the beginning of the year, the uh, there's a total change of roles. So Eli is handling our college ministry and our youth ministry right now. And the youth area is what Anthony was handling for a long time. So his role is moving into an executive and an operations kind of role, day-to-day -day operations, overseeing staff, as well as focusing more on outreach. But we were checking the records, and I know it goes back farther than this, but in January 2009, that's when he received his first small paycheck for being our part-time youth pastor. Part-time. Before that, he was doing it on a volunteer basis. We don't have a record as to when that started, but at least that long. And in June 2012, he left his position in Names and Numbers and came on full time. So at just a moment, I'm going to ask a few people to stand. And so think this through. If you have ever been in the youth ministry when Anthony was the youth pastor, I'll ask you to stand in just a moment. Or if you've ever had a teenager or a family member, son, daughter, grandkid, that's been under the youth ministry while Anthony was involved. At this time, would you please stand? So stay standing. Yes, stay standing. Because he's surveying fruit. And sometimes it takes a while to hit the heart. You may be seated. Thank you. So in the change of this role, and I'm glad the board nudged me on this because I'm not smart enough to think of this kind of stuff at the time. We want to thank Anthony and Misty because when Anthony was taking your kids to camp, they meant Misty was holding down the floor, right? Yeah. So we want to thank them for investing in the lives. Think of it. Investing in the lives of the teenagers of our families for the past seven years. So on behalf of the church, we want to present a gift for their entire family to get away to the Wolf Creek Water Park up in Kansas City. And some other you guys just watching how many people stood up and crazy God is good God is good all you gotta do is be obedient to what he calls you to do thank you both thank you Pastor Mark and Sarah thank you to all of you guys and my wife <laughs> who 
recuperating health with all of those uh, long weekends and camp weekends and convention and mission trips and is uh, all worth it. Thank you. Thank you once again and thank you for the gift. I'm going to hijack for just a moment because our focus has been on Anthony. Misty is intricately involved in the mission and the ministry of this church. Uh, for those of you who do not have little ones here, you may be totally unaware that she is our miss she is our nursery coordinator. And I'll be honest with you, as much as going on sabbatical sounds easy to do, there is a lot of front work necessary to get all of your ducks lined up. And I don't know anybody that would have more challenges to do that than Misty. So if you serve in her area, would you please stand and be recognized because we need you to step up and fill in the gap in these in this next month that she is gone. Thank you for serving and give Misty her due. We need others to work with us. Number three, I need others to watch out for me, to watch out for me, to defend me, to have my backside, to see my blind side. To stand up for me, to want me to make, to succeed, to keep me on track when I go off track. We launched a new men's group this past Wednesday night, kind of a free, free launch, and we'll start again this next Wednesday. But one of the men was mentioning in there when I asked at the end. We went through, did the basic. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you from? What's your first car? Two guys in the room had the exact same first car, '73 Super Beetle. Go figure. The uh, top speed, you know, like 54 miles an hour, if it's thrown from a plane. <laughs> But I have, the final question was, we got a little more intimate. I said, guys, why'd you come tonight? Why didn't you stay home and watch Netflix? Why didn't you, don't you have a long to-do list? Why did you bother showing up tonight? And one of them mentioned something along the lines at this point. I need others to watch out for me. I need others to watch my backside. I can't see everything. I got blind spots. I got blind spots. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Paul's talking about how we need to be like Jesus. And he says this. Each of you should look out not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. A circle is a great way to look out for the interest of somebody else, for looking out for someone else's interest. And I can hear I can hear the arguments inside some of your heads, especially you guys. I don't need that. I can watch out for myself. I don't know. Does your life ever go in reverse? Does your life have one of those beep, 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 beep when you're backing up? Have you ever backed in anything you weren't supposed to? My son's truck has a dent on the side because I did. We all have blind spots. We will drift toward isolation, independence, and autonomy if we are not careful. Just to summarize from a previous series this year that the board said pretty much was their favorite when we were asking, who tells you no? Who in your, who in your circle of your life will tell you, hey, I think what you're doing is wrong and a mistake and you're getting ready to implode? Does no one tell you no? And if so, is that a problem? Who do you know that makes better decisions when isolated from people? Do you want your 25-year-old to be isolated? Of course not. Community is God's antidote for failure. Because we will fail. We will stumble. There will be stumbling blocks in life. Jesus didn't say, follow me, and you'll never have stumbling blocks. He said, when you stumble, be of good courage. Be strong. I've overcome the world. Community is God's antidote for failure. And lastly, number four. I need others to wait and weep with me. Wait and weep with me. In the same way that I need people to walk with me and Christ will walk with me. In the same way I need people to work with me and Christ does that. I need others to watch out for me. Christ has already done that. But I need others to wait and weep with me. Who will cry with you when life hits you hard? Because there will be a day and a time that it will come. No one should be alone during those times, yet many people are. I get to do a lot of cool stuff as the pastor. A lot of cool stuff. I get to drive the Chi Alpha truck sometimes. Mm -hmm. They let me do that. That's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm, sometimes I got to do some pretty uh, difficult stuff. Funerals. Sometimes those funerals are lonely places because there's no one there. There's the 10 people that pretty much are required by society's standards because of their direct physical relationship. They have to be there. 
and it's painful all over the room. But then there's other ones where there's hurt, there's grief, there's sorrow. But because of the people that are there, all those sorrow seem to be cut in half because they're not alone. The people that are directly connected to the deceased need to generally be reminded, hey, all these people you got around you, that's a sign that this person that passed away was investing in people and that you are, and not just investing in stuff. These people that are around you, you're not being alone. I've been to situations where there's the funeral and the immediate family and that's it. So thankful that you were investing in other things. Whether you're awaiting the outcome of a life and death surgery, you're trying to figure out God's plan for your life, a group of believers who are committed to you. Now there's a problem with a group of believers that are committed to you. You need to be committed to them as well. So some of you today are going to say, yeah, I'll consider joining a life group. I'm going to add that to the 5,000 other things that I'm doing. I'm going to go once, once every six months. That's not a commitment. You won't get anything out of that. I was commenting to someone the other day who was mentioning they wanted some more depth in their relationships. And I just mentioned, hey, long, slow, boring commitment to something like a life, just a circle of friends. That might be an official flag life group, but a circle of friends that are going towards Christ. Long, slow, boring, steady commitment. After three months, you're not going to have much. After three years, you'll have more than you can dream, think, ask, or imagine. You'll get invited to more four-year-old birthday parties than maybe you ever wanted to be invited to. And you'll have more people to invite to your kid's graduation party. And you'll have more people bringing food over when you're going through a tough time. And you better learn how to cook because you're going to have the opportunity when other people are going through a tough time. Or just know someone that can cook and go by and drop off the ingredients that make you something. I need others to wait and weep with me. Because community is God's antidote for despair. And this world will bring despair. And we walk through this world and we will trip. And maybe it won't be a smooth ride like coming down here on those little butt glider thingies. We will take a spill. Madison Estrada, are you okay? See, if we had staff do that, that would be workman's comp. And that's why we couldn't do that. <laughs> Community is God's antidote for despair. Romans 12, verse 15. Be happy with those who are happy. And weep with those who weep. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. If one member suffers, we suffer together. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, Encourage each other and strengthen one another. Who will wait and weep with you? I hope you got a ridiculously long list. I hope that you do. But I know for a fact from phone calls that I get, and I'm trying to talk to this person to say, hey, I would encourage you to call these other people in your life, and they don't have those people in their life, and I'm the only one they're leading on to wait and weep with them. If I'm the only one, my, my pastor will wait and weep with me. Yes, I will. But look around the room. There's not enough of any one pastor or any two pastors to go around to meet all the needs. He's called us to be a body, not just someone at the top covering for everybody else, to wait and weep with each other. At the end of the, the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul's writing, and he's trying to end his letter, and he ends his letter, ends his letter like a, a preacher that can't end his message, because he lists off 27 people that he has a personal connection to. We won't read the verse out loud because one, it's long, and two, I can't pronounce half the names. But he knew a lot of people. It wasn't just the church. Jesus hung out with 12, right? Jesus had crowds of 5,000. Yeah, but he hung out with 12. 12 in houses. Not just on the hillside to the large crowd. He was teaching everybody, but he was accessible to a few. And inside that few, he was even more accessible to others. Maybe you're in a position of influence at your work. Do you allow people to have access to you that you're not an authority over? The apostles met in houses. In the New Testament, we're told to love one another, encourage one another, strengthen one another. We are lousy followers of Christ if we're isolated in rows. I just want to encourage you, let's not spend the rest of our life, the next season of our life, disconnected.